Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Today we'll be doing some more uh, ladder grinding here for best of one standard. Um, if you're new to my channel, thanks so much for stopping by. And if you do end up liking my comment, uh, my content here, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. For my returning viewers, thanks so much again for coming back and supporting me. You guys really do mean the world to me, so I appreciate you. Uh, the deck list will be in the description, both on moxfield.com and untapped.gg. And then there will also be a link to all of my other playlists, both for constructed content, uh, as well as limited, draft, and sealed, and um, collabs. So check those out if you're interested. I do want to give a big shout out here to my, uh, my members. So thank you so much again for becoming members of my channel and helping to support uh, both me and the growth of the channel. And this is a great way um, to get early access to my content if you're interested for as low as $1.99 a month. Um, there's a couple different levels, so check those out. And here's exactly how you do that if you're interested. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, so let's look at the changes here to Boros Humans. So yeah, after kind of rebuilding the deck in the last video, um, I did realize that it really did need a lot more removal, um, which is kind of running into sort of unbeatable hands against um, like uh, mono white or mono red aggro with the slick shot lock, uh, the slick shot uh, show off. And so just having some more access to removal, I think is really gonna help the deck a lot. Uh, kind of in the same way that I sort of made that progression with the mono white humans deck. Um, it's a little bit different here with Boros Humans because we do have access to Recruiter, and so some of the cards here are a bit different, but I brought in um, four copies of March of Otherworldly Light, which was amazing in Mono White Humans, so I fully expect it to be really good here. And then also four copies of Brutal Cathar, which is just, you know, doubling as a creature, and then also removal is just premium for what we want to be doing. Um, and then I also brought in one copy of Get Lost, kind of as like the fifth way to deal with temporary lockdown as well as other threats um, outside of the marches. So I think that's sort of a nice mix of removal. Uh, we have nine main deck removal spells and then we also have kind of like four more removal in our lands with the Iganjos. So what I ended up shaving was I ended up cutting a couple copies of Adeline just to make room for everything. Um, I think at the top end of the deck, I really don't want to have more than about 12 or 13 creatures, and so I'm trying to make sort of a nice mix here. Um, we still have 12 one-drops, which feels pretty good. I think these are the best of them, especially now that we have Resolute Reinforcements in the deck with uh, Warden of the Inner Sky. And then we still want Recruitment Officer so we can set up turns where we have like Brutal Cathar and can use Officer while this is flipping. For the two drops, I did end up cutting um, all of the Intrepid Adversaries. I think that it certainly was a great card in Mono White Humans, but I think because we're adding in the Imidane's Recruiter, we can kind of shave on those. Um, losing the, the life gain is going to hurt, but I think we get a lot more life gain out of the Veterans, and you know, there's never really sort of a guarantee that we're going to connect with the... Um, with the adversaries, you know, even in the mono white human stack. So I think just kind of cutting room somewhere to make room for everything we want to do, hopefully will, will be a good change. So um, with all of this, let's go ahead and jump into some games. I think we're currently in diamond three, I want to say. So slowly climbing here. But I hope you guys are having a great weekend, and um, if any of you ended up making into the qualifier weekend that's going on, you would love to hear how you guys did, you know, um, or what your experiences are. 
I ended up uh, yeah, doing one of the best of three qualifiers the other day. And so if you haven't seen that video, check it out. It was a really great video. Um, had just an awesome, awesome time. But this opening hand looks fine. We've got two land. We have March on one. And then some stuff to do. This is an interesting one with Skrelv. Um, probably just wait for Cathar here. So this could be like the Bant Toxic deck, or it could just be like Mono White Humans. Kind of hard to say. Something a little bit different, looks like. I haven't seen Orza of humans, so this would be interesting. Okay, let's just uh, pick off their Skrelv and just kind of start setting up. Not interested in trading here. Okay. So we've got the Aganjo. Um, we could Brutal Cathar their Adeline here. I think I'm just gonna attack and see if they decide to block with anything first. And then if they don't, we can just do Brutal Cathar after combat. Could also March it. Um, I think getting down the Cathar could be nice since we've got March back up. Okay, so no blocks here. We could also wait and let this thing flip and then march it like on their upkeep. Um, I think I just want to get the other Cathar going since we've got the extra marches here. The nice thing with March is it also works really well with Brokathar in case we haven't got like a recruitment officer going. Um, so it just sets up sort of more good turns for Brokathar. Again, here we can use Ganjo, so happy to just swing out. Now they are actually representing Iganjo themselves. They've got two legendaries and one uh, mana open, so they potentially could have Iganjo for the blowout here. Yeah, I guess it's enough that I'm just going to attack with these two here. Now we'll just wait for the flip. Jurina. Okay, cool. Um, do we want to respond? I don't think so. We'd have to deal with the Skrelv and then the Jurina. Okay, well they just double spelled for us, so I think we're fine with that. So now I think I'm just going to march their Skrelv just to start setting up since we're going to get a double flip here.
They can use the Jirina here when, when we flip, but that's fine. I guess we'll try to take their Jirina first. And I think probably want to get Officer out of the way also. Yeah, that's fine. So I think we just do another another round. Adversary is good. Should we march that? Um, we want to have two spells on our turn, right? Actually, it doesn't really matter so much here. I guess we just... Yeah, let's march that now. You can also march it like mid-combat. Pretty good. Um, but the Thali is going to be annoying. I think we can, yeah, we can march for, actually we can only march for one right now, so. Do we want to get officer? I guess we'll just hold. So here I think we just use a ganjo and a swing in um, if they want to present the Thalia. And actually now we can just get lost the adversary. Um, the same as March. I guess March doesn't give them any tokens to deal with, so we can just March that. Yeah, we had a, had a lot of options there. But yeah, I think this is definitely a better setup for the deck. Um, March just works really well with Brutal Cathar. Same with Get Lost. And it gives us more early interaction against like the Slickshot Showoff decks, um, Boros Convoke. Yeah, opening hand looks good. <coughs> Painland does kind of hurt a little bit, but... So the question here is, do we want to just play Officer, or do we want to go for, like, March, potentially? Not sure. I think we play Officer this turn. Yeah, this is great. So now we're happy to trade with Codebreaker if they want to give us that option, which they don't. Um, okay, so now I think we might want to 
just main phase reinforcement so we don't take the pain. We could also play Copper Coat. Or we could march. I guess we could hold up march in case they have nonsense next turn. Yeah, I feel like we just want to develop a little bit. Like, we can draw into... We're probably racing right here, so we... we uh... Because if they have, like, Monstrous Rage plus, like, removal, they can just push a lot of damage. I think we go main phase reinforcements, because if we draw into uh, Knight Errant, that's really good. And then I think we offer the trade here. I don't think they're going to take it, but I think we offer it. We're probably racing a little bit. Just because with Monstrous Rage, like, we, we can't really block effectively here. Wow. Okay, they're just doing like a super setup turn. Now I think we can... What do we do here? We could go like Vanguard and then push. And then hold up March. I actually like that. Because they, they probably won't do 18 to us in one turn, but this also lets us be aggressive. Okay, make sure that we tap the mana right here. But yeah, this lets us get a little bit aggressive. I think we are happy to trade Recruitment Officer with any of their threats here. Oh my god. <laughs> it's gonna be like the biggest swing in ever. Okay. Do we march? I don't think so. I mean, if they just want to sit back, we can just push with recruitment officer here. So we have to assume they've got like removal for Vanguard. So we're not pushing lethal. So we probably like push a little bit, but not completely. So I think we just attack with these three. So we assume they've got some kind of pump in their hand. What have you got? I guess all creatures and no spells. That'll work. Whew. Weird hand. We'll take it. Yeah, opening hand looks great. That's definitely one of the best openers they could have there. Okay, so this is like the pump, <clears throat> the pump variant of the deck. Um, now I think we just hold up mana for them to kind of invest in this Picnic Ruiner. We could kill it right now, but I don't think they've got protection, so let's just sit.
now. They're just going all out. That makes sense. So let's see if we can get him to invest even more. Okay, I guess that's it. Okay, let's uh, gain some life and then set up for Knight Errant. <clears throat> then we'll just do this main phase to get Warden going. Do we want another mana? I don't think so. So I think we forced the scamp to, I guess, take out our veteran, and that's okay. Take some damage here, but we have to assume they're gonna kill it anyways, and we don't want this to like double up on damage. Okay, that was a nice rip. Question is, do we want to tap four or just three of our creatures? <clears throat> we probably want to tap all four, actually, because there's a good likelihood we draw like a one drop here. Okay, so we've already got two Imidane's recruiters. I think we just want, do we want Adeline here? Sort of as like a, I don't really see us using it. Um, I guess it does make extra creatures though, which is kind of nice. So we probably go like Warden for the toughness plus Adeline, I think. So yeah, they could have pump here, but we want to get it out of their hand. So I think we're fine. Just um, let's see. I guess is there any chance that we can counter swing for lethal next turn? No, because they'll just block one of our guys. So I think we just like take the um, removal out of their hand. do we want to go Adeline or Recruiter? I think Recruiter feels pretty good here. We're at 14, although this will make two guys and block decently well. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Adeline here, actually. Hmm. No, actually, I think Recruiter is probably... This pushes more damage. <clears throat> We're at 15. I don't think they can kill us in one turn. And this like sets up lethal for the next turn if they don't block. Hmm. 
guess they would need like twin strike or something. Yeah, and they're out of cards. Yep, that'll do it. So yeah, having that early removal, super relevant. I'm very happy with the changes so far. <clears throat> yeah, opening hand looks great. Question is, how will the deck hold up against blue white control? I think I'm going to be a little cheeky here, and since we've got the march, I'm not as worried about them having a lockdown. So before playing the cavern, I'm just going to go ahead and play the officer. Okay, that's fine. Again, since we've got March, not worried so much about the uh, lockdown. So we could push for a little bit of damage here. I think I'm just going to get this going, though. Another warden. Um, it's OK. I guess it gives us like two plays next turn. I'd kind of like to see, I think we want uh, to try to search for a recruiter though. Okay, so it looks like they're just setting up for um, board wipe next turn. So I guess given that, let's just push. And if they decide to activate, we can march. Could also copper coat here, get a little bit more damage in, but I think there's a pretty high chance they're just gonna board wipe next turn. Got it. Interesting. Okay. I mean, if they haven't got it. Okay, that was a perfect draw. We'll take it. Here's the other play. If we go for, say they've got some for sort of removal here. If we go for Vanguard, um, actually I guess that like if, if they've got removal and they kill the recruiter, we're still pushing three, five, seven, nine, one. Yeah, they're just dead. Okay, that works. I was thinking of being a little bit coy and playing like Copper Coat first, but 
We don't need two. We'll need two pieces of removal here to survive this one. Hmm. Actually, I guess that gets them out of it. Yeah, this, this way they go to one. Now if they have board wipe, yeah. So maybe it would have been better to go copper coat there. I forgot about Emperor. I guess they didn't have it, but copper coat might have been able to play around that. And then that way we have like the follow up with uh, Recruiter after they board wipe the next turn for the win. So it worked out, but I think maybe it would have been a little bit safer to go for um, the Vanguard that turn. I will say, though, I really am enjoying having uh, re Resolute Reinforcements back in the deck because it's so good against blue-white control. Just, like, setting up turns where you have, like, stuff coming in, and then, yeah, it's great. I didn't realize how much I missed that card until, <laughs> until I started playing with it again. All right, let's lead out Veteran here. Yeah, this deck just feels so much better than the earlier versions. Like, it's not even close. Well, since we've got Night Errant, we do want to go Reinforcements. And I don't want it countered, so I think we do it now. Virtuoso, okay, different deck. Well, it's open, so let's mar march it right now. Can't let this card sit around. I think we lose the, probably the officer, because then we can go like reinforcements into Big Knight Errant the following turn. Virtuoso number two. Yikes. Uganjo is good, but I don't. Like, I expect him to have protection now. So I think we want to play this out. Um, we could go reinforcements here. We could also go Vanguard, just kind of nice. I think reinforcements is slightly better, though. So then we can play this the turn after, get everything like a pump. Swing and a whiff. Okay. Question is, can they kill us in one turn? I think it'll take two turns. I assume they're holding some kind of protection. Um, I think we just face tank it and push.
Yeah, and they're consistently holding up blue, so I assume it's... It's like either March or some sort of blue protection spell. Let's see, does it have trample? Yeah, it has trample, never mind. Okay, so now we can start looking with Officer. We probably just do that. I think we're still face tanking here. Um, these both represent about the same amount of damage, so I guess for an attack with one, we attack with both. Oh, it's first strike though, so I mean that'll kill this and then we'll lose the pump. So we're pushing four, six, seven, eight, nine. <sighs> yeah, it's probably it's probably worth it. Okay, we definitely leave one back to potentially deal with. We probably leave two back actually, just in case he's got like bounce or some other nonsense. I think it's unfortunate, but we can only push with these ones. And then here, I think we're still looking. We want to save our mana for that. Oh, Inti gives it trample, yuck. Okay, that's probably it. That works too. I think, yeah, we, we might have had a chance if not for the Angel Fire uh, life gain retribution thing. So. Yeah, and that's going to do it. Not a bad run, though. Four and one. Feeling pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it was a good game. Like, we didn't draw what we needed, but it still worked out. Overall, it was fun. Good beats. Okay, let's take a look at the stats. All right, we are currently 13 wins and 8 losses, so 62% win rate. Um, definitely helped with those recent changes. That was 80% for this session. So feeling really good about the changes that we made. We made quite quite a bunch of changes, actually. Brought in a ton of removal, which I think is helping a lot. And then, um, again, like I said, we shaved um, some of the, I think, the weaker cards or just cards that just we just didn't have room for. Um, Adeline is great, but like we only have so many slots in our three-drop slot. And I think for this deck, it makes more sense to have the recruiters uh, mostly in that place. And then we need the Brutal Catharsis just kind of as a necessity. So... Yeah, uh, for the changes, I guess we, we cut one secluded courtyard, cut three Adelines, cut a Thalia, three adversaries, and three initiates. And then we brought in um, four copies of March of uh, Otherworldly Light, one Get Lost, uh, one Reinforcements to bring it up to a full playset, and then four Brutal Cathar and one Battlefield Forge. So we still have 22 lands, but just cleaned up the, brought it up to a full playset of Battlefield Forge just because we've got more spells that actually required um certain colors of mana so overall really happy with it and uh yeah try it out see what you guys think we will see you in the next one and you guys have a wonderful weekend